Okay, are you planning on staking or becoming a validator for Ethereum? Would love a tokenmetrics video on how to prepare and set up. Thanks. So currently I don't have any plans to stake uh, Ethereum uh, at the moment, uh, but I mean, I think it, it definitely is a smart idea. Uh, I, I just haven't done it yet because uh, I've been busy with tokenmetrics you know, and things like that. Uh, but my understanding is actually here, let, let me see if I can pull up the best staking guide I found uh, for this. Let me see. Yeah. Staking. Because there are lots of guides out there showing you how to stake Ethereum. Uh, okay, there's one from staking rewards and there's one from Ethereum themselves. So the one directly from Ethereum, I think it's probably the best guide out there. So you can stake your ETH to become an Ethereum validator. They walk you through everything. It's made nice and simple. So even non-techies can kind of understand what's going on. Then there's also this other guide from staking rewards that shows you how to do it. And they also go through the different services that help you stake if you don't want to handle the node yourself, right? Because handling a node is pretty technical. So let me go down there here to the different providers, right? So here we go. This is the image they have. Okay. So you could stake ETH on exchanges. So looking at this Coinbase, Binance and Kraken and Bitcoin Suisse will be providing staking. Now the issue with this is you obviously don't have control, uh, not your keys, not your coins. Uh, and then all these other lending platforms as well will be providing staking. Uh, but the cool thing is, because you have to, to stake, you have to have 32 ETH, right? So if you don't have that, let's say you have just two ETH, but you want to stake and participate, you can go to, to staking pools and do that, right? So you have staking pools, you have Staker, Staffy, Rocket Pool, uh, you have Validator as a service, all these different platforms here. So there, there's so many options available. So if I do end up staking, I would likely probably use a pool or an exchange. I would have to do my research, uh, but definitely make sure whatever service you do is one that's credible. That's going to be around for, for a while. Because for those who don't know, uh, st if staking, essentially you have to wait until if you have to wait for 12 to 24 months. Um, so I highly recommend checking out this article. Let me post this in the bottom of the chat so everybody can check it out. But I think this, this has been the best guide on Ethereum staking because they go through all the different service providers. Uh, let me see what they said, 24 months, right? So funds are locked up until phase one and a half. So right now we're in phase zero, I believe. So your funds could be locked locked up for one to two years. So are you willing to do that? If you're willing to do that, then by all means, go through all these different providers, do your research and find out which one is most credible. Uh, but I think most people would likely use the exchanges because especially like Coinbase and Binance, those aren't really gonna go anywhere. But the issue on downside is you, you don't really control access to the keys, right? But as spoken with, several security researchers and they told me they actually trust big exchanges a lot more with security than people trying to custody their own funds and at this point i think we're now at a level where that could that could be the case because binance has their software fund coinbase uh, i'm not sure coinbase has yet to really be hacked and i'm not sure if they have insurance but i know binance does so i'm not sure if coinbase has but the fact that they're in the US and regulated and about an IPO, I would think they would have some type of safe measure. Let me see if I can even search that. Uh, give me one second, Coinbase insurance. Okay, so this is what comes up when we search this. How is Coinbase insured? Okay. Okay, all digital currency that Coinbase holds in its online hot storage is insured. If Coinbase were to suffer a breach of its online hot storage, the insurance policy would pay out to cover any customer funds lost as a result. 
Okay, but do they tell us how much? Okay, so look, I'm seeing FDIC. These custodial accounts have passed through FDIC insurance up to the depositor coverage limit then in place. Okay, so definitely look more into this, but it looks like they also do have insurance, which, which does kind of uh, appease some concerns. Uh, Bill, what's your take on staking uh, Ethereum? Okay, well, it was really funny that, you know, prior to ETH running up, you know, it seemed like no one was interested. And then all of a sudden when ETH ran up a hundred bucks, people suddenly became interested in this program. It's <laughs> yeah. funny how that works. Um, I, I think when it comes to staking via exchanges, you know, I know I, I just gave that whole rumor mill thing. Uh, you know, I, I gave them a hard time. Folks, at the end of the day, big crypto exchanges cannot afford to be hacked. If they get hacked, the whole system could crater, right? So they're going to be insured. They're going to go the extra mile on security uh, because they know that the legacy world is never coming over to crypto unless they can, they can present the appearance that funds are protected the way they are inside of a legacy investment bank. So if you're going to do your ETH staking through an exchange, um, I think that actually might be advisable, particularly if you're talking about what's locked up for two years, right? I mean, in 2017, if you told people two years later, you know, Bitcoin would hit 3000 before it would go back to 20K, they would have referred you for mental health. So anything can happen over a two-year period in crypto. Yeah. Anything, anything, anything. Actually, actually, speaking of that, because um, some people were talking about uh, our readings not being bullish on ETH. Let me see. Uh, for the coin grade, let me just take a look. Uh, give me one second. So looking at this, they are bullish. So I guess just a word of, of guidance to our customers. If you're looking for quick trend reversals, always begin with the lower time horizons first. So if, if it's quant grade, monthly, quarterly, yearly, right? The longer the time horizon, the longer it takes to change because you, you have to have a huge trend reversal to really change the yearly grade versus other grades, right? So looking at this here, um, we have, uh, so yeah, Ethereum is pretty high, 90% for the month, for the monthly, quarterly as well. Yearly, not so much, right? Now that does not mean that we think Ethereum is bad. We're just saying from purely looking at the performance, we think in the next one to three months is where most of the, I would say is where most of the gains are coming from or we expect to come from, right? So basically after three months or so, Ethereum might not be the best hodl, so to speak. Now that does not mean go out, go out and sell everything. We're just kind of from looking at all the different metrics and all the other coins in the system, the best time to be in Ethereum is the next one to three months, essentially, right? Um, Bill, uh, any, any, any further comments? You know, when, when it comes to ETH, um, you know, I, I'm gonna stick with a lot of my chart work. I, on this one, I mean, <clears throat> So here's how I do it when quant and charts sort of conflict. I'll come up with a point on charts. I think with ETH, it's like 505. I think if ETH is holding above that level, it's okay. Uh, and if not, then something might be wrong and you've got to pay more attention to say the quant warning signals, right? So, you know, I have to do what you have to do. I have to put the signals from the AI together with any work that you might do or I might do. All right, thank you, Bill. So if you wanna check out all those grades and Bill's work, be sure to subscribe to Tokenmetrics. Once again, we have 40% Black Friday, Cyber Monday code available that expires tomorrow. Coupon code is anniversary2020, all caps, one word. Anniversary 2020, and that's the number 2020.